What's going on, golf addicts? Welcome to Tour Junkies After Dark, presented by DraftKings. I am David Barnett of the Tour Junkies. This is Pat Perry. We are here. We have just finished our Safeway Open podcast. I got to be honest, I'm a little tipsy. Um, had a little too much podcast shoes for the night. It's me this time, not you. You're, you're just doing what we say we, we're going to do for TJ After Dark. You're just following through. Yeah. With being whatever after dark. Being very after darkness. I'm very, yeah. I'm yeah. very, uh, yeah. So I am, it's been, it was a good show. We had a good podcast. Uh, we actually, believe it or not, actually, it was a good podcast. Like we had a good, good, good discussion on a number of players, number of like strategy theory kind of things to think through. I'm excited about that, Pat. Um, it's a new PGA Tour season. The old one ended about uh one moon ago just literally 24 or 48 hours ago yeah i mean um no time yeah, at all we're on to 2021 2020 whatever they call it i don't know what 2020 2021 yeah um so it just ended dj won all the money and here we are safely open 156 man field cut event week field week af field but a lot of opportunity is presented when you have a weak field like this. There's a lot of leverage to be had, and I'm excited about that, Pat. Uh, before we get going into this, if everyone could please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe here to the DraftKings YouTube channel. That would be awesome. Um, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. We, we would appreciate it. L listen, be nice. Be nice to us. If you're watching this, don't waste the next 20 minutes of your life if you think we're tools. Okay, just don't do that. Let's get into this, though, Pat. Let's, let's hear about the golf course here hosting the Safeway Open. Then we're going to get into a couple of names that you kind of scratched your head over, I think. And then we're going to hit uh, just some, some general theory on betting this week. And we're going to look ahead at the U.S. Open, which is next week. It's a major championship event from winged foot. It's going to be awesome. We're going to look ahead at those odds. But, Pat, for now, while I continue to, to have some, uh, some, some adult beverage here, unnamed adult beverage, don't you like that cup, by the way? That's a cool cup, um, and I've got an unnamed adult beverage as well. Mm -hmm. hmm. Well, I but do that. It's, you talk about the golf course. Well, my beverage should be some vino, some wine, because it's this Napa. week we're in Napa, California. Should be. For the Safeway Open, and I'm, I'm without wine, which is very unusual for me, but I uh, don't have any right now. Uh, we are at Silverado Resort. Wait a Why are you without wine? You usually always change, after the podcast, you change from liquor to usually rosé for TJ After Dark. In the I, one week I can the tour only, is it in, in Napa, you don't you didn't do that. I can only claim laziness, and that's it. I didn't go. Boy, I, I must be really hammered because I don't see you with a glass of rosé. Yeah, nothing I got. Anyway, just pretend it's rosé. Let's just pretend. Wow. But we're at Silverado Resort and Spa. This is a north course this week. It is a par 72 playing just under 7,200 yards. We've got 156 players, so a full field event. Top 65 and ties will make the cut. As you mentioned, it's not a great field this week. It really isn't, and you'll see that when you look at DraftKings pricing. Uh, Siwoo Kim is the highest price golfer this week. Um, yeah, so that tells you all you need to know. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got po Poana Greens, which you typically see on the West Coast in California. They're going to run very quick. I think it's going to be pretty dry out there. There is no rain in the forecast, and it's, I don't think they've gotten any rain at all. So it's going to be firm and fast. Um, the course, though, is not all that difficult. It typically plays as one of the uh, kind of the middle range against courses on tour, like in the 25 to 30th as far as hardest courses on tour. The rough out here is Kentucky Bluegrass. you got Bermuda Fairways. Uh, just another vintage tree line track. These guys, though, I think they're going to score a ton. I think they're going to. I'm looking at the scoring stats. I'm looking at birdie or better percentage. I'm looking at par five scoring. Now, we talk about length a lot off the tee, where it's always an advantage. But there are some dog legs on this course where these guys are going to have to play pretty strategic off the tee. They can't cut the corners, so I do think that some of your shorter hitters can play well here. Um, you know, even though we saw like guys like Cam Champ last year 
They can just bomb it all over the place. But Cam Champ not only bombed it, he scrambled pretty well and did other things other than just bombing it off the tee in order to win. There's a lot of contour on these greens, too. There's a lot of undulation. The greens are very tough. And as we know with Payana greens, as they get later in the day, they can be a little bit bumpy. So you got to be a good putter on those greens. And I'm looking at that stat as well. I'm looking at long-term form on Poana greens. I think that's important. Also, um, I mentioned par five scoring. I think that's something we're going to look at in strokes gain off the tee and approach. So there you go. That's the course breakdown for the Safeway Open. DB, anything to add? Yeah, I, I like par five scoring. Strokes gain approach is every single week on the PJ Tour. That's a big, important just stat. Um, strokes gain around the green. Last year we had some late breaking caddy inside information over on tourjunkies.com where a caddy said, listen, this place is playing really firm and fast. It's going to be tough to hold the greens. Players are going to have to scramble, get up and down to play well here. Well, what happened? Cam Champ finished number one in strokes gain around the green and he won the golf tournament, okay? So it looks like this year is setting up to play very similarly, as Pat just mentioned, no rain in the forecast. So I do see it playing firm and fast. We'll see come Wednesday. Um, so I do think strokes getting around the green is something you want to look at. Uh, but the rough typically is not too penal out here. So, yes, you can be a bomber who just pounds it down there in the rough, in the fairway, doesn't matter. Or you could be a shorter hitter playing on these firm and fast fairways, get a lot more run than you normally see, and still move it down there and still have short irons into these greens. Long story short, you got a par 72 that's only 7,100 and change yards long. That's not that long by PGA Tour standards. So there's going to be a lot of scoring. You know, you can expect winning scores somewhere between 16, 19 under is my guess. Um, and yeah, putting on POA does make a, make a difference. Now, in terms of DFS, I also know this. Last year's highest, uh, the, the perfect DraftKings lineup, you would have left uh, $3,400 on the table. Now, that's pretty high for, for, for most <laughs> weeks, okay? The reason is because this is such a weak field. You know, you, you, there is not a real, like a real upper echelon of golfers at the top. There's not really a second tier upper, like, We've seen a lot of strong field events since the restart, and this is the weakest by far. So because of that, you don't have a lot of distance between the, you know, the, the, the top players and the middle players and the middle players and the lower players. There's just not. Like, this is a wide-open event for literally you know, 130 of these guys are very capable of winning this golf tournament. So leaving money on the table, especially in large GPPs, I think is a very big deal. And I'm also really proud of myself that I'm coherent enough to tell you that because I, that's a very important thing that all people should know. I'm proud of you as well. I'm very you. proud of you. Um, but I'm not proud of you in, in, in this. Well, oh. I don't know. I don't oh. know if it's oh. – Ouchie. I, I, I don't know if it's it, – you know, I, could, I should say that. That might be a little harsh. <clears throat> but, I mean, <clears throat> I'm trying to figure out why Jordan Spieth was one of your favorite plays Oof. this week. Because Jordan Spieth hmm. is really just not a very good golfer right now, in general. <laughs> yeah. And yet, on the podcast, he was one of your favorite GPP plays in the 9K and above range. He wasn't in the 8K range. He was in the 9K range, which you and I both love the 8K range. I need to hear more about Jordan Spieth and why you're going to play him this week and why he can finally change things from whatever we've seen over the last couple of years. Yeah, okay. So, admittedly, Jordan Spieth is a rather queasy play this week. He's like he's like when you were a kid and you didn't you forgot to bring your lunch and they had meatloaf in the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. You know, and you I put it on they, the plate. I think meatloaf is underrated. I feel like it's I think underrated. It's, I think it's disgusting. So, I would get queasy. Um, so I totally get it. Uh Jordan has very much sucked, okay? However, there are – okay, Jordan struggles, very well documented. They've been going on for a while now. When the restart happened, you know, he comes out very first event of the restart, right? You remember this? And everybody's like, ooh, if there's ever a time – and we, we said the same thing. This at the Charles Schwab. If there's ever a time to play Jordan, it's now, okay? Because 
Who knows what happened in the restart? There's all kinds of question marks. What have all these guys been doing over the last 60 days between tour events, right? Or 80 days, whatever it was. Maybe he's found it. Maybe he had. And guess what? He finished tied for 10th. Now, his ball striking sucked, but he gained eight and a half strokes on the greens, right? That's pretty, pretty freaking good. This is a similar feeling. It's not a restart, but it's the weakest field we've seen him play in in a long time. This is not a strong field whatsoever. So since the restart, yes, he's had two missed cuts. He had a 72nd at the Wyndham, basically DFL, basically DFL at the PGA, finished 30th at the St. Jude out of, what, 65 players? Not terrible, mm-hmm. okay? The 13th at the Memorial, 13th at the Memorial. That was a great finish, okay? Uh, actually did a lot of things well there. Missed the cut of the workday. Uh, no other good finishes outside of that top ten. But he's playing against really strong fields. Now we get him in a really weak field. I think he's going to be low-owned because people are going to continue to fade Jordan Spieth. But actually, in the last 24 rounds, which include a missed cut, a 72nd, and a 71 place finish, he checks the box in strokes gained approach, checks the box in strokes gained around the green, and checks the box in strokes gained scoring on par fives. Now, what has he not done well? He's not hit fairways. But I think you can get away with that this, this week. I really think you can. He putts well on POA. It's a second-best putting surface over his PJ Tour career is actually POA. He puts best on bent, but POA is next. He's positive in that strokes gain category. Low-owned, high-upside guy, probably a pretty low floor. Jordan could totally finish absolutely DFL on Friday and go home. But could he top five this, this golf tournament? Could he top ten? I think he could. I mean, if he could finish T10 at the Charles Schwab and T13 at the Memorial in those fields, how could he not how, – how could you say he couldn't top five here? And, and I just think this is an interesting spot to take him. And I think if he does make the cut, he always scores. He scores well. He's a good DraftKings player for that purpose if you can get him all four days. So there you go. That's my coherent defense of Jordan Spieth. Very good, I think, by the way. I think it was, too. St- I, as I was saying it, I was like, hell, I just convinced myself all over again to play Jordan Spieth. Yeah. I, should, I would easily convince these people. In fact, in the YouTube comments, why don't you comment whether, you will, whether I have changed your mind or I have not, okay? And you too, porn bots. The, the porn bots can also reply. If I've changed your mind, are you going to play Jordan? If you're a porn bot out there or not, whether you are or you are not, tell me, have I convinced you to play Jordan Spieth, yes or no? I think I have. I, I, I think you did really well. And as a matter of fact, um, I'm going to go again. So usually it's – I feel like this is flipped. Like usually yeah. it's you questioning me. But this week is a little bit strange because we had a lot more agreement and you had the more polarizing plays. And J.B. Holmes was another play of yours down in that 6K range, a guy coming off of an injury – who I actually was looking at when I'm doing my research, I was like, you know, he's kind of, I feel like this could be, you know, he finished top 10 here two years ago when he was played last, but he's coming off of an injury. I think he could be a sneaky play. Now you don't need to go into it as far as you did with, let's just back it off a little bit. Okay. You did a good job. With, you did a good job with Jordan, but just okay. give me a, a few tidbits on why JB Holmes is out. Like Holmes. Say. I, I, the biggest reason is the upside. The biggest reason is the upside. He's a multiple PGA Tour winner that hits it a long way and scores on par fives. He's always done that in the long term and the short term on the PGA Tour. He's always done that. And when you look at Cam Champ, Brendan Steele, who's won here twice, Kevin Tway, who won here in between Champ and Steele, like those are long hitters that score well on par fives. He fits the profile here, and I think the upside is a win for a guy at 6,900. For a guy in the 6K, it's very hard to find win equity. And J.B. Holmes gives you win equity in GPPs. He finished ninth at the Safeway last year. Now, you talked about the injury. Here's what happened, okay? J.B. Holmes had a great year going prior to the restart. Finished 16th at the Farmers, 16th at the Waste Management, 14th at the Pebble Beach Pro-Am. 
came out, played the Workday Charity Open. His first event since the restart was actually five under through 11 holes and then completely blew up with, and withdrew because of a shoulder injury. Now, that's been weeks ago. That was, like, that was a long time ago. Months ago. Not I don't ago. know why he would be playing in the Safeway Open injured. So I don't think he's going to – I don't think he's – I don't think he's uh, – he's coming back to test it out at the Safeway. You know, and, and I guess we'll see. Like maybe we'll get a little bit of inside information on Wednesday that we can mention over in the Nut Hut member chat on tourjunkies.com. Maybe we'll get something. Maybe we won't. All I know is if he tees it up on Thursday and presumably healthy, he is worth the risk and upside in tournaments because he literally gives you win equity. He won the Genesis in 2019. He puts best over his career in, on POA. He loves the West Coast. POA, POA green surfaces, the only green surfaces that he's positive in strokes gained over his entire career. This is a multi-time PJ Tour winner at $6,900. So if the shoulder is good, I'm gonna roll with JB. Okay, I mean, if, I mean, I, I, again, I said this, you know, early <clears> on, <throat> just you know that he could, uh, he kind of popped yeah. for me a little bit. So, um, so in in approaching this week on the sports book thing, I think I just want to get into this before we look at the U.S. Open. This week, okay, but again, because there's not that upper echelon, there's not, you know, normally, especially since the restart, we've seen names like Daniel Berger, Patrick Cantlay, Colin Morikawa, Xander Shoffley, Patrick Reed at that 20 to 1, 30 to 1 number. That's what we're used to betting. Those are multi time winner PGA Tour up studs in that range. This week, you're going to see Siwoo Kim, Shane Lowry, Phil Mickelson at 20 to 30 to 1, okay? I, I say forget that. Like, go, go longer this week because this is one of those weeks where anybody could really come out and win this thing. And longer odds, this is a great week to take advantage of all the variants because you just don't have that upper tier because it's such a weak field. So start a little bit longer. Look for guys with high upside. And, and kind of fade that, that real short range. I mean, even Pat, who's a known short, you know, shorter player, odds better kind of guy. Like, even Pat isn't crazy about playing a Siwoo Kim or a Phil at 20 to yeah. 1, 25 to 1. Like, no, in this field, you just shouldn't do that. There's just not the, 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 the parity. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the two, the, the last, you know, four or five winners too, you know, Steel winning it twice. You know, Emiliano Grillo winning it like four or five years ago. He was probably at least a hundred to one. You know, Kevin Tway. Kevin Tway. Kevin Tway had to have been a hundred plus to one. Yeah, Cam Champ last week or last year was probably, and he won. It was probably in that fifty to sixty to one range. But I mean, that's probably as short as you really want. Like, if you really want to, like, yeah, you know, look, drill down. You, you could shouldn't go much shorter than that. I mean, unless you're just really loving a guy that's like a Shane Lowry or whatever, but which I do like, I like Lowry, but I agree with you. I, I think you got to go with some of the longer shots here this week. Um, that's what, who we're going to see that, that win this tournament. So yeah, you ain't going to see Mickelson at 20 to one winning this tournament. Oh, it's going to be tough. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, let's look ahead at the U.S. Open a little bit. U.S. Open's next week. People are starting to check odds for that. DraftKings Sportsbook has some great numbers out for the U.S. Open right now. You can get in on that right now. They're playing at winged foot. It's going to be a very difficult golf course from what we've heard. Extremely firm and fast. Fairways extremely tight, rough, extremely penal. Uh, you know, looking to be – I think what I saw or, or heard was that the superintendent and head professional and, and head of the USGA – we're completely fine with a plus number winning the U.S. Open. So difficult golf course. With I that, think you're you, gonna. I think you're. I agree with you. And as a matter of fact, I mentioned on the podcast that I was I was just with my brother uh, this past weekend who has played Wingfoot recently, and hmm. uh, very small greens as well from what he he recalled. And I think when you're where you're looking at these you know small greens, rough as high things like that. 
I mean, this this course is going to be playing very difficult, and um, it's going to be a it's it's going to be a test for these guys. Yeah, cream is likely to rise to the top here. Unlike the Safeway Open, maybe looking at some shorter numbers would behoove most most sports betters. I would agree. Um, Pat, why don't you talk about just a first look? You're glancing at the at the odds on DK Sportsbook. What are you seeing? Who kind of catches your eye and is thumb stoppable as you're scrolling there? Well, let me talk about one that's not thumb stoppable, and that's mm. Bryson DeChambeau, who's at fourteen <laughs> to one. I think that's just way too short. And then going off of whatever he did back a few weeks ago, I don't like him on this course. I just don't think that this is this is a course for him. So. I'm not going to be playing him at 14 to one. Um, I think if I am going to play somebody at 14 to one, it's going to be a guy like Justin Thomas, who we just saw finish very well at the tour championship, um, had a great season is still playing extremely well. So I like him at 14 to one. I'm okay with going up that short to play a guy like that, but who really jumps out to me is Webb Simpson at 25 to one. I think this is a perfect course fit for him. I like that number as well. You know, he's right around like Cantlay's at 25 to 1. I mean, Cantlay hadn't showed as good a form as Webb have. I mean, you know, Tiger's right there at 28 to 1. So I'm, I'm going to go with, with, uh, with Webb right there. And then Daniel Berger. I mean, 30 or 28 to 1. I mean, Berger's just played as good as anybody in the world right now. And you're getting them, you know, at, at that 28 to, to 1 number. I'm a big fan of that. So on the shorter end, I would say Webb and Berger right now are the guys that just catch my eye when I'm looking at the DK Sportsbook. Yeah, I would throw in Xander there, 20 to 1, uh, as good as Xander played at Eastlake. Um, you know, Tita Green, driver, irons, very accurate. Uh, plays well on difficult golf courses. I got to throw in Xander at 20 to 1, but Webb is definitely one I looked at. Um, who do you have? Who do you have after that? So a little bit longer, I think Scotty Scheffler at fifty to one. I, I, I mm. think this is this is a guy that's just been incredibly could have won solid. the PGA. Yeah, it been incredibly solid of late on a very tough course, by the way, for the PGA. So I like him at fifty to one. I think that's a good number as well. Um, I think that you know you look at a guy like Harris English at sixty six to one. Uh, didn't play all that great at the Tour Championship on a tough course. Um, but I still think we've seen a lot of good stuff out of him, and you're getting him at a pretty long number. So I like that as well. Um, I don't know. That's that's probably in that middle range. Those are my two favorite guys. What about you, DB? I, I'm actually coming around on Tyrell Hatton, the the Englishman that has played very well, played really well this week at East Lake. Had a great PGA Tour season. Won at Bay Hill, which is a little bit of a tougher track on the PGA Tour. Um, can definitely, you know, compete on tight fairways, penal rough, firm, fast conditions. 55 to 1, I think, for Tyrell Hatton. I think he's got the chops to actually pull out a victory here for sure. Uh, so I like Tyrell Hatton. I, as I get a little bit longer, I'll, I'll creep into the triple digits here, if you will, uh, if you will, will allow me to do. Martin Keimer, who almost won this week yes, on the European I was about Tour. To yeah, you know, major championship winner, Martin Keimer, known ball striker, um, has obviously competed in many major championships and won major championships and a, P and, a, and a player's championship as well. So knows how to contend and compete in big events. Good to see him playing well on the European tour. And a lot of people are probably going to miss that if they're not paying attention. 100 to 1 is a nice number for a guy like Martin Keimer. Obviously, his biceps will be glistening at wing foot, which is also – worth about a quarter of a stroke every every round uh and then as i get a little bit longer i'm going to go with another european tour mainstay right now that most people probably don't know about and that is sam horsefield at 150 to 1 the man is killing it on the european tour right now winning golf tournaments f coming close to winning golf tournaments if he's not winning them absolutely tremendous young player uh, on the European tour, 150 to one is a large number for a guy who's playing as well as he is right now. And I think like we saw with the PGA and that went documented by some of these young players, the f not having fans helps the younger player, helps the younger player with a little less experience. It takes a little bit of that atmosphere, a little bit of that nerve out. 
And I think that's where you could get a guy like Sam Horsfield do well. So 150 to one, that's uh, he, he kind of pops for me right now. That's it for me. Well, right now, we'll have I'll more next week. The last one I'll go with right there next to Martin Keimer is Brendan Todd. I mean, everybody, nobody wants to be like like Brendan Todd, but the guy's just done nothing, you know, but play extremely good golf. He hits fairways, he hits greens, he's a good scrambler, he's a damn good putter. I mean, I think Brendan Todd at 101 is is you know that should be a little bit shorter, just what we've based off of what we've seen from him. So I like him at 101. I'll, I'll throw him. Okay. All right, good stuff, Pat. Uh, thanks for watching Tour Junkies After Dark. We appreciate it. We'll be back next week to give you a full breakdown of the U.S. Open from Wingfoot. We're super excited about that one. Be sure, again, subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, and comment whether or not I convinced you that Jordan Speed is worth a play this week. May your screens be green. Good luck. See ya. Oh.